and get started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you are staying warm, staying safe, and staying blessed. I really appreciated Brother Hunter's message earlier during the Bible class hour. Uh, he is doing a fine job with the Book of Romans. Um, as of now, seeing that everyone is not able to uh, actually have their little uh, sermon outline handouts uh, to fill in, uh, I went ahead and just go ahead and provided a good uh, PowerPoint, a simple PowerPoint, uh, some with pictures and really uh, mainly just with the main ideas and the uh, major points and minor points uh, for you to follow along and uh, take notes. So we'll go ahead and get started. I hope everyone is having a wonderful, blessed day and that they are staying safe, staying warm, and staying blessed. A third grade teacher wanted to try an experiment with her third grade class. Her third grade uh, class consists of 30 students, 30 kids, and what she wanted to do on Valentine's Day is to put together this experiment and to have each of her students to write out a Valentine's Day card for their fellow classmates. With 30 kids, that would make it to be 29 cards that each kid is supposed to write out. Well, come on Valentine's Day, uh, she decided to uh, go by each and every student to make sure that they have 29 cards. Well, when she got to little Susie, little Susie had 30 cards instead of 29. When the teacher asked why she has 30, uh, did you uh, accidentally make an extra one for the same person, she asked. Little Susie said no. In fact, the very first Valentine's Day card that I filled out was to myself. To me, from me. And when the teacher asked her why she wrote a Valentine's Day card for herself, little Susie responded saying, I have to first learn how to love myself before I can love others. I love that illustration and that story. Because what is it that you really want in life? What do you really want more than anything else in the world? Is it money? Is it to be popular? Is it salvation? These are not the things that you, deep down, really want. In my counseling experience and observation, I have concluded that man ultimately wants one thing. He wants to appreciate and love himself. Man wants money because he feels money will give him self-worth. He wants to be popular because he says, if other people like me, perhaps I might like myself. Why should a man be saved unless he loves himself enough to save himself? When a man cannot love himself, he begins to doubt if God does. And if God does not love him, he begins to really doubt if God would even bother saving him. Until a man has biblical self-love, he will doubt his salvation. Folks, are you even aware that God expects us to have self-love? Yes, with today being Valentine's Day Sunday, a lot of people in life are going through hard times. Today, many of those individuals see Valentine's Day as a sad day. Their spouse left them. Their father passed away. Their grandfather passed away. Thus, they have a very difficult, hard time. Not just on Valentine's Day, but every day. But are you aware that God expects you to have self-love? Before you can love others, you've got to learn to love yourself. In Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, we come across a very well-known discussion about the greatest commandment. Often we immediately jump on this passage and start talking about loving God and loving others, which nothing is wrong with that because we should. We should. Jesus says the greatest commandment is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And the second, just like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Most of the time, 
we overlook those two words, as yourself. Folks, when was the last time you actually heard a sermon on self-love? Not often, because normally those two words, as yourself, are overlooked. Before we even try to love and care for others, we must first learn to love ourselves. That is what God expects of us. So, ask yourself this question. Do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Well, hopefully, after the end of this lesson, maybe it will help you to learn that you have self-worth, self-value, and that, yes, God expects you to love yourself. He expects all of us to love ourself. Well, what is self-love? A lot of people have a difficult time trying to understand what self-love is and what self-love is not. What is the concept of self-love? Well, this morning I would like to actually focus on three points of this lesson. And I like to spend most of the time on point number one, about the concept of self-love. The concept of self-love. And there's two particular passages that discuss and talk about the concept of self-love. First, in the context of Matthew chapter, or excuse me, Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, we see the concept of self-love in this context. In the context of Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31. To kind of give a little bit of a background of the text, during his last week in Jerusalem, Jesus was asked many questions by the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were seeking to find some grounds upon which to have him arrested and executed. In verse 13 through 17 of Mark 12, the Pharisees tried to trap Jesus with a question about paying taxes. In verse 18 through 27, the Sadducees tried to trap him with a ridiculous hypothetical question about marriage in the afterlife. Well, seeing that both parties failed, miserably failed, at trying to trap Jesus, one of the scribes came up and asked him, which commandment is the most important one of all? Verse 28. Well, we have his response in verse 29 through 31. Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment greater than these. Quoting from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. The key is found in those two precious words, as yourself. These two words are fundamental in helping us to understand how we are to love others. As yourself, Jesus says. I am to understand you as I understand myself. If I cannot understand myself, I am at a loss to understand you. Every problem in life involves self. Too much self or too little self. Jesus says, Corey, you have to deal with Corey before you can deal with others. I must analyze, know, understand, and come to a balanced concept of self. And the concept is one big pretzel, folks. How can you love and care for others when you do not love and care for yourself? Even more, how are you going to love God when you cannot love and care for others because you do not love and care for yourself? John says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, He who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Why should you love yourself? Well, first, you ought to love yourself because God loved you and Jesus died for you. I have no right to hate myself. 
that which God loves and Christ died for. I have no right to disrespect myself or abuse myself. Second, you cannot love God when you cannot love yourself. Notice what the text says at verse 30. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. What is all? What is all? All is inclusive of your entire being, heart, soul, strength, and mind. Everything that makes you, you, you love God with it. But if you do not love everything that makes you, you, then how are you going to love God with it? How can you love God with your entire being if you do not even love your entire being? You ought to love yourself because you cannot love God when you cannot love yourself. Third, you ought to love yourself because God made you for greatness. Man is the crowning act of God's creation, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. It is a sin to look down upon a human being, a being made in the image of God. You were made in the image of God. Therefore, when you are looking down upon yourself, you're looking down upon the image of God. And that is wrong. You are God's trophy, trophy of creation. Because after he made you in his image, he said it is very good. Not just good. It is very good. You are the crowning act of God's creation. You are given the capacity to love and to live with yourself. Fourth, you want to love yourself because Jesus says, love your neighbor. This word neighbor is from the Greek word that is used interchangeably with the word friend. Every person you come into contact with, including your enemies, you are to love them like a friend, Jesus says. You are to love them like a friend. Well, even my enemies, absolutely. But guess what? Did you know that you are your own closest neighbor? Did you know that you are your own worst enemy? With that being the case, how am I supposed to treat myself? The answer, you are to love yourself as a friend, neighbor, and enemy. If it is a sin for me to run you down, it is equally a sin for me to run myself down. If the Bible teaches me to forgive you, it equally teaches me to forgive myself. When we learn to have self-love, we will be able to love and care for others. When we learn to love our entire being, then we will be able to fully utilize our entire being and our love for God. Yes, we ought to love ourselves. God expects us to have self-love. And here we have the concept of self-love in the context of the great commandment of Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31. We also see the concept of self-love in the context of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 through 33. Here Paul says, again in verse 28, In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Stop right there real quick. During my mission work on the Navajo Reservation, I counseled several, several women that were experiencing domestic violence from their husbands. And the question is, why? Why are husbands violently mistreating their wives? What I've concluded from every case 
is what the Apostle Paul says here. The reason why a husband violently mistreats his wife is because he hates who he is on the inside. Self-hate is the most destructive asset on earth. Self-hate brings man to the very bottom. Self-hate turns him to hate others. Self-hate points him to suicide. But on the flip side of the coin, there's self-love. And self-love is the most therapeutic asset on earth. It, until a man can love himself, he cannot change himself. Well, what are the characteristics of a man, of a person who has self-love? Well, Paul tells us right here. Paul gives us certain characteristics that help us know when a man slash husband has self-love. Look at verse 29. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. He does two things. When a man has self-love, he nourishes his own body and he cherishes it. This word nourish in the Greek means to provide that which is required for life. Water, healthy food, and sustenance. When a man is hungry, he feeds his body. When he is thirsty, he puts something, some liquids in his body. He gives himself something to drink. He also cherishes his body. And this Greek word means to make warm, comfort, and esteem. The point is this. Each per person naturally cares for himself. When he is hungry, he makes sure that his body receives food and nourishment. When he is sick, he makes sure that his body receives medical care and rest. But now in the context of Ephesians 5, Paul is saying to the husbands that since you and your wife have become one flesh, then you need to give her the same love and consideration. Even just as Jesus, the head, gives all love and nourishment to his own body, the church, you husbands, who are the head of the household, must likewise do the same to your wives. A husband who does not have self-love will not show that same love to his wife. And for a husband to not show love and consideration to his wife is to commit spiritual suicide because he is one flesh with her. So folks, from the context of Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, and the context of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 through 33, yes, God expects us to have self-love. And from those two passages, we have a good understanding about the concept of self-love. Well, there's another thing about self-love that we ought to keep in mind, and it's about the confusions. The confusions about self-love. A lot of people have a big misunderstanding of self-love and what it is. Well, point one, we answered the question of what self-love is by looking at the concept of it. Now, we're going to look at what self-love is not through the confusions about it. Well, when we go back to our main text of Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, when we narrow down verse 31, we see what self-love is not. Number one, self-love is not sentimental love. This love that Jesus is talking about is not sentimental. Often a person might say, well, I can still like others and not love myself. Well, two things. One, people may say that, but they never show it. <laughs> and number two, in reality, overall, Jesus says, no, you cannot. You cannot still like others and not love yourself. It can't happen. No, it cannot happen, period. Why? Because the love that Jesus is talking about 
is a profound love which preserves a man's soul. When he hears the gospel, he will obey it. Why? Because he loves himself and wants to save himself. Mark chapter 8, verse 35, and we'll talk a little bit more about that for tonight's lesson. He will be a good man. Why? Because he loves himself. He will have ethics, moral ethics, and godliness, and dignity upon which to stand. Why? Because he loves himself. Love, self-love, is not sentimental love. It is a love, a profound love, which preserves one's soul. Secondly, self-love is not independent. Self-love is not independent. Jesus says, love your neighbor. Many of us have given up and said that it's an impossibility. I can't do it on my own. It seems to be a very independent type of characteristic. But I can't do it on my own. Therefore, it's just it's an impossibility. We say that I have sinned way too much. I'm too weak. I'm pathetic. Well, Jesus says, no, you're not. You're not too weak. You're not pathetic. Jesus says that you can love yourself. Because he says that loving of a neighbor is dependent upon your loving yourself. The loving of a neighbor is dependent upon your loving yourself. He also said that the loving of your wife is dependent upon loving yourself. Therefore, it is not an impossibility. It is not independent. It is possible because with God, all things are possible. And it is dependent because your love for your neighbor is dependent upon your love for yourself. Thirdly, self-love is not a lover of self. Love your neighbor as yourself. It is not a lover of self. Self-love is not selfish. Self-love is not egotism and narcissism. We are not talking about arrogance or self-will. If you want a great definition for someone who is a lover of self, it can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. There in that passage, Paul gives a description for the false teachers. He says that false teachers are a lover of self. And then he gives an entire list of many things as to what a lover of self is and looks like. And folks, from our first point, we can understand that the concept of self-love, it is not a lover of self. It is simply self-love. It is not selfish. It is not arrogance, it is not egotism, and it's not narcissism. After we have a good understanding as to what love, self-love is and what it is not, we now need to look at the conclusion of it all. What is the conclusion that I need to know about self-love? Well, number one, you need to know yourself. You need to know yourself. I have talked with many people about problems who do not have problems. They are the problem. We put band-aids on, on problems and think, oh, isn't that wonderful? I am all cured now. Well, no, it is not cured until a man comes to terms with himself. Man does not have a bottle problem a gossip problem, or a worry problem, or a drug problem. He has a self problem. Therefore, I need to know myself. I need to be honest with myself. Secondly, the conclusion about self-love is that you need to accept yourself. You need to accept yourself. I know I have mistakes. Ignorance, 
and weaknesses. But I have some assets too. This is the grace of God and the glory of Christ Jesus. My worth is not in Corey. My worth is in the fact that I am a Christian. My robe has been washed by the blood of the Lamb. My name is in heaven. My identity is in Christ Jesus. I need to forgive myself, be patient with myself, and encourage myself. Thirdly, you need to be responsible. You need to be responsible. We need to quit feeding people who will not work. We need to stop for that person's dignity. As long as a man knows he is not feeding himself, he cannot love and respect himself. The first loyalty to a child is to teach him to be responsible. A parent's greatest failure is doing for his children what they should be doing for themselves. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, Moses said, Like an eagle stir up its nest that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them. The mother eagle kicks out her babies. Why? Though the eagle may fly, each eagle has to learn to fly for itself. When my child arrives in this world, he cannot inherit my religion or my success. My wife and I will teach him the importance of responsibility. Because as long as a man is unwilling to work and be responsible, he cannot have satisfaction when he looks in the mirror. Folks, what it boils down to is that self-love is more about character than achievement. Self-love boils down more to character than to achievement. Many beautiful people simply cannot live with themselves. Many millionaires are miserable. They have, but they are not. Only a good man shall be satisfied with himself. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. Yes, folks, God expects us to have self-love. Today, before you ask others to be your valentine, learn to be your own valentine first. Love yourself on Valentine's Day. Love yourself every day. When you do, then you'll be able to fully love God with your entire being and to love others as well. When you look in the mirror and know you have lived up to your potential, when you see calluses on your hands from working and calluses on your knees from praying, you know you have made the effort. When you can honestly say to yourself, I did my best, then you can love yourself. Remember, if you are a Christian, you are a child of the King. You are a Christian and you wear the name of Christ. You are a temple of God. You are heaven bound. You have dignity and worth. If you are not a Christian, well, it is not too late to become one now. As I stated earlier, a man who cannot love himself would not even be willing to save himself. To have self-love, you will heed the gospel call today. That way you're not saving your physical life, but you are saving your eternal life. The life that you will spend forever and ever once you pass away from this world. If you're not a Christian today, I encourage you to become one now. It's not too late to become one now. But I encourage you to do it now, to put Christ on, 
to know that your worth is not in yourself, but it's in Christ Jesus. Because when your worth is in Christ Jesus, you will therefore be able to have worth in self. You'll be able to have self-worth, self-value, and self-love. Become one today before it's too late. The question is, do you love yourself? If you do, then you will immediately become a Christian. You will heed the gospel call today by believing that Jesus is the Son of God. By having a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of lifestyle, knowing that you no longer are going to walk this ungodly way, but you are going to walk this godly way to Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. You will then confess that Jesus is the Lord, Master, and Ruler of your life. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And then you will be baptized into him. Your robes will be washed by his blood. Your sins will be washed away. You will be saved. Your identity will now be in Christ Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27. Then you will remain faithful to the day that you die, having self-love, having self-value and self-worth in order that you may be able to love and care for others and to love the Lord your God with your all entire being. Bow with me in prayer right now, and then the lesson is yours. Father in heaven, we come before you on bended knee, begging that you will give us what it is that we know so that we can be able to understand ourselves, to know ourselves, to analyze ourselves, and to come to the conclusion that we do have self-worth and self-value in this world because our self-worth and self-value is found in your Son, Jesus Christ. Only He can be able to help us to see and understand the value and purpose that we have in this life. Let us learn to love ourselves first so that we can be able to love others and to love you with our all entire being. I ask that you be with those who may be struggling with self-esteem, may be struggling with self-worth and self-value. And may your word that you have written out for us, that you have God breathed for us, may pierce their heart, may comfort their heart, and may heal their heart to help them to see that they have self-worth and self-value in this world and that it can only be found in you, Father. I ask that you be with all lost souls that are out there, souls that are truth seekers and seeking for the truth. May we as the Church of Christ here in Painburn may be the vessel to utilize and to extend the gospel to all that we come into contact with. May we continue shining the light and love of your son, Jesus Christ. I ask that you be with each and every brother and sister here at the Church of Christ in Pangburn, that they may be uh, safe and that they may stay warm and stay blessed. Continue to watch over them and to heal them and to be with them and to protect them at all costs. For it's our prayer through your Son's most holy, righteous name, Jesus Christ, the name that is above all names, the name, the only name that has salvation, and the name that helps us to know that we can love ourselves and have self-worth and self-value. Jesus Christ, amen.